I have been having this recurring dream and in this dream there is a dead man. He's lying in my room curled up around his stomach. I think I know him but I can't be sure. The resemblance is striking. It is a resemblance to a man who has walked a thousand miles. A resemblance to a man whose ancestral suffering is etched in his half-open but dead eyes. He is poor and lonely in his death, killed before his time. He could have walked miles and still survived. He could have gone days without food and water and still survived. He could have burned in the flames of the apathy of this world and still survived. He could have seen droughts, disease and floods and still survived. He could have been challenged by the premature urgency of wanting to give in and still survived. But he's dead. He's dead because he would not die. He's dead because it's annoying to see this stubbornness of life. And because it's possible to kill so easily. He died because it is possible to erase life so easily. Does it matter who killed him? He is lying here in my room. I say it is my room because I am here. And if I am here, it must be my room. Only the dead are exempt from these rules. And it is he who is dead. Therefore, it must be him who has crossed the boundaries that the living are incapable of crossing. He's here in my room. He has no business being here in my room. But I cannot get rid of him. His dead body is lurking in the corner, lifeless. And yet, hauntingly alive. I sit still, not moving, just watching, not thinking, just holding my own hands. I hold my own hands because I cannot possibly hold his hands. They are too cold, too cold to hold. Scream, I calmly ordered myself. Everything could be fiercely summed up in never emitting a first scream. A first scream unleashes all the others. A first scream unleashes life. If I scream, I will unleash existence. My tension suddenly snapped like noise interrupted, and the first true silence began to whisper. But that whisper is not life, and it is not eternity. It is damnation. How luxurious the silence is, you might say. It's built of centuries. You see how out of fear I'm already organising. The possessed are not possessed by what is coming, but by what is coming back. Dehumanisation is the process of losing everything. Everything. I was opening and closing my mouth to ask for help. But I could not. 
and did not know how to articulate. I knew I was forever bidding farewell to something. Something was going to die. And I wanted to articulate the word that at least summed up whatever was dying. I'm asking for help. I had already tasted in my mouth a man's eye. And from the salt in my mouth, I realised he was crying. Suddenly, with the muteness of those whose mouths are gradually filled with quicksand. I'm asking for help. It was final now. It was simply now. Here. And now, it was like this. The country was an eleven in the morning, superficially as a yard that is green of the most delicate superficiality. Pray for me, my mother, since not transcending is sacrifice. And transcending used to be my human effort at salvation. I used to think that there was an immediate usefulness in transcending. I have to transcend, even if the transcending is born inescapably from me, like the breath of someone alive. But I want much more than that. I want to find the redemption today and right now, here and now, in the reality that is being and not in the promise. I want to find the joy in this instant. I want some sort of a God. I realise that I'm still using that old human beauty. Salt. Since what I was saying predated humanity.